Hey, this is Matthew with BI Polar. In today's data culture video, we're going to talk about how Power BI and other self-service business intelligence tools can be like a two-edged sword. I hope you'll join me. A few years ago, something interesting happened. I noticed that swords were coming up more and more frequently in work-related conversations and it wasn't me introducing them. It was my customers. Specifically, when I was talking with enterprise Power BI customers, the leaders, the strategic business and technical decision makers at large enterprise organizations, they would often mention to me that self-service BI was like a two-edged sword. My reaction, of course, was yes, that's the best kind of sword. And then I realized that they were coming in with a much more traditional, mainstream, and inaccurate definition of that term. A lot of times when someone uses the term two-edged sword, what they mean is something that can have both positive and negative effects or positive and negative consequences. In reality, a two-edged sword is a tool that has two different parts or two different ways of being used, each of which has its own unique strengths and weaknesses. You see, very much like Power BI, which can be used both by self-service business professionals and used by uh, uh, data professionals, uh, developers or engineers that work for a BI or IT org, a two-edged sword has both the true edge, so that edge that aligns with your fingers, uh, that has, when you use it, the mechanical advantage that ideally you would want to use, it also has a false edge, the offhand edge that you can use as you need to, also to very great effect. And ideally, each edge will be used at the time and in the way that it needs to to solve the problem at hand. Let's actually take this sword outside and put it to use using both the false edge and the true edge to great and effective use. All right. So let's take a look at a few different clips uh, from our cutting session outside. And at this point, you may be saying, it's like, Matthew, is this video just an excuse for you to bring together your passions for BI and your passions for swordplay? And the answer is no. It definitely is that, but you'll find that this analogy actually holds up to very close inspection, surprisingly close inspection, uh, once you start looking at it and thinking about it. Let's look at those cutting videos. So in this first video, I'm using the true edge of the sword. And I'm making the four standard cuts, so descending from right and left, and ascending from right and left, uh, cutting through a tatami mat. As you can see, there's a lot of mechanical advantage. It's easy to use, works pretty well. This is a beginner level cutting fee. In the second video, I'm performing the same cuts, but this time with the false edge, with the other edge of the sword. So as you notice my body mechanics, it seems a little bit more awkward and all four cuts are successful, but at the same time, it takes more of an advanced skill to solve the same problem using the same tool, but in this different way. Now, let's look at how we can use the false edge and the true edge together to great and devastating effect. This is a double cut where I am first cutting uh, through the tatami mat with the false edge of the sword, and then I am cutting through the top part, the bisected part, before it falls with the true edge of the sword. And if we step back from the literal sword play and think about how this fits into the context of using Power BI or another managed self-service BI tool, hopefully the analogy will be clear, make a little bit more sense and feel like less of a stretch. Now, in an ideal world, every IT team would have all of the resources and all of the tools and all of the skills to deliver every project. 
There would never be a need for self-service BI because those data practitioners, those BI professionals, they would be available and they would have both the technical skills and the business domain knowledge or partnership to deliver each time. That's not the world that we live in. Similarly, in a sword fight, we would be in the right position at the right time to use the true edge of the sword in every exchange, regardless of what our opponents were doing. That's not the world that we live in when we're competing with a sword. This is where the false edge or self-service BI comes in. With self-service BI, typically the business professionals that are solving their own problems using Power BI, they're using the same tools that the BI professional would use. Uh, they may not have all of the advantages and all of the skills. They might not have a computer science degree or Microsoft certifications for working with data and so on. But because the tool is able to be used by anyone, they are able to solve their problems. And even if it's not with all of the advantages or all of the skills, you know, it might not have the fine tuning or the performance tuning that a professionally developed solution will very often they're able to act opportunistically to take advantage of where they are, the tools that they have to solve the problem at hand when they can't actually uh, engage with and get support from that central BI team. They're working with the false edge of Power BI. And if we think about that third clip, if we think about that double cut, this is often where the most successful, most mature uh, organizations are where they have a strong partnership and relationship between the work of their business teams and the central IT or BI teams that support them, where there is an operationalization process, a handoff or grow up process where the business teams are enabled to act immediately and opportunistically to solve the problems as they arise and then the BI teams are ready to engage, to pick things up and to uh, scale them, to make them uh, perform the way that they need to, to become more maintainable or scalable or, or the like. And this type of relationship is certainly a learned skill, but it is where the most successful Power BI organizations are. And when we think about a two-edged sword, and when you hear me talk about the true edge and the false edge, understand that this is simply about how the weapon is being used in the moment. The edges are the same. This is the true edge, but this is the true edge as well. This is the false edge, but also this is the false edge. It's not about the physical edges, it's about the way that they're being held and used. Similarly, Power BI has a set of capabilities, you know, all of the edges that you can imagine, and whether one uh, is used by a BI professional or used by a business professional, it's the same features that can be used by anyone in the organization that has a problem that opposes them. And by using the two of them in combination as a swordsman, I am much stronger and more successful in a fight and as an organization by understanding how do I enable my business to solve the problems as soon as they arise while setting them up so that the IT team can come in to take it to the next step and to drive through this long-term strategic success. This is why Power BI is like a two-edged sword. And I hope that whether or not you care about swords and whether or not the analogy works for you, that you'll look for ways to take advantage of the capabilities that are in Power BI, both for self-service and for professional BI, and to look for the relationships between the people and the teams in your organization to get the most value from it. And if you'll forgive me, I'm gonna go cut something else. See you next time. And we're back. After I finished filming this video, while I was editing it, I also put together a clip of some of that cutting session and put it out on my personal YouTube channel. 
Now, as is often the case, people on the internet have opinions about people with swords, but unusually, there was someone who came in with a very useful and insightful comment on my cutting video. YouTube user Swords with Swords actually put together uh, this great feedback, both about the cutting and about the safety implications of cutting with the false edge. I've seen a few situations where a cutter has lost control of their sword uh, when cutting with the false edge, and this feedback is, is true and important to keep in mind if you're doing anything with a sharp sword. And the reason I'm sharing this is not because I expect people to be out there cutting safely or, or dangerously, it's because this feedback is related to, or is the sword version of, feedback that you'll likely hear when you're talking about enabling the false edge, self-service business intelligence in your organization. People will come to you and say, oh, don't do that, that's not safe. And just as I can cut safely with the false edge of a sword, you can enable your self-service business users to work safely with data on their own. So as an example, a one-handed sword where you don't have the additional strength of the second hand, you would never cut with the false edge with a sword like this unless you had your finger over the guard uh, and knew what you were doing. Like you need that additional physical support. Your self-service business users need support from you and your center of excellence. They need training, they need guidance, they need best practices, they need templates. These are the steps that you can take to ensure that when you work to enable the false edge of business intelligence in your organization, when you work to enable those self-service users to solve their own problems and to be as agile and responsive as they need to be, that they're doing so in the safest possible way. Don't just throw a sharp sword into the hands of anyone who wants it, don't just throw tools to people uh, who have problems. Instead, give them the training, give them the resources and support they need so that they can work in a safe way that minimizes the risk while still empowering them to get the most from the tools that you've put in their hand. I hope that this makes sense. We'll see you next time. Take care.